It's nice to see a zoo with a lot of scenery. Hey everybody, Tom here for Beyond Walt Disney Planet. I'm in Naples, Florida today visiting the Naples Zoo at Caribbean Gardens. Lots to see around here. Uh, they got a nice layout that makes a nice uh, a loop. This is a smaller uh, zoo than some of the larger ones that I've seen, but there's a lot of lots to see. Uh, right from the get-go, there's a lot of nice scenery. So that's the gardens part. Uh, lots of shade. So let's go check this place out. I'm going to show you the map of the zoo grounds. Don't have a a flat one. So this is the paper map that is given as you enter. As you can see, it does make a, a loop. Body water on the right is the the Primate Expedition Cruise. And you see the giraffes, top right. So not a really big zoo, but they have a nice selection of animals. Alright, so we got a blue and gold macaw. And also military macaw. So these two here are the mil military macaw. Don't know green plumage and red on their head and then of course we got our blue and yellow macaw the zoo puts uh, paper in their little play toys so they like to shred the paper and this right here is made entirely out of plastic beach trash stuff that's washed up on the shore Lots and lots of plastic. This type of plastic is not biodegradable. It does not break down. A lot of lids. From drink containers, plastic bottles. A lot of this stuff turtles end up eating thinking that it's food. So be respectful of the environment that you're in. Don't litter. Man, that is a lot of trash. American alligator built to last. Yes, very, very hardy animals. So you can see them in the water. Kind of moving a little bit towards where I am. Hey, alligator! What's up? He's looking for a handout, some food. He's not getting my hand. Uh-uh. Another alligator head sticking up. Typically, this is the only part of the body you're going to see, unless you're swimming. See his tail moving back and forth. Yeah, this must be where they feed them. Yeah, see, he's all coming over. Red rump agati. Okay, he's kind of behind. This is the red rump agati. You can see him behind the the plants. We should get a better view than this. There's a giant ant eater. I was looking around this enclosure for the giant ant eater and I found him inside this little igloo. Just trying to stay cool. Got a red footed tortoise. Now again I was looking around this enclosure and I happen to see inside 
the igloo and he's right there. And these are always super cute, the cotton top tamarins. <gasps> Hi. Aww. Wow, for once he ran towards the camera. Wow. These little fuzzies are running away. They got a slender horned gazelle. There's a slender horned gazelle right there. Kind of up on a little hill, sunning itself. Let me get a better view of the gazelle going through the fence. Yeah, this nice enclosure, we got a mountain bongo. There's a nice mountain bongo. Got a nice close look at it. How are you? Wow. He's got a, a bug on him or something. Got another one over here laying in the nice cool ground. Happy to see that you have nice enclosures here. Lots of room and tree coverings and shrubs. Got a clouded leopard. We have several ladies in our Berkshire ladies. I see kitty tails dogs. right here. Really? Oh yeah, they're good. They're kitty good tails. I can't do it. Um, yeah, I'm over here in the back. Oh, here we go. Look at that. See? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Now this is a leopard. These are clouded leopards. That is just amazing to me. Yeah, I was told I there's, a, there's a tortoise on the other side of this fence that they're curious about. On the front, looking through the glass. Get a little better view of them. And a tortoise right there, other side of the fence. There's also different photo ops around the zoo. Make it look like you are getting a picture with the actual animal. Got South African lion. Just as the name suggests, they are lying around. Got two of them up there taking a nap. Yeah. Look very comfortable up there. Got the male lion on the front right and the female in the back. And his legs are twitching. Must be having a dream. Got a nice back end view of the female. Sorry about that. Here we got some Plains Zebra. Yes, sir. Four of them all together. That guy walking on the left looks really familiar. I think I saw him on fruit striped gum. The zebras have a nice, nice habitat. That's got a nice water feature. That's gonna be nice and relaxing when they're trying to take a nap. The sculpture is called Lydia the Seal, and it's also made out of plastic material. And this is an animal you don't see in many zoos. It's a honey badger. And I apologize for the reflection, but our honey badger is coming out. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, muscovy duck. You find them all over the state of Florida, usually around ponds and lakes. A couple more of them. Some people think these ducks are ugly. I do not. I like them. Got a younger one. What's up, duckies? Now these are young muscovy ducks. Same species as the one there with all the red on its beak. But these are what they look like when they are younger. 
Lots of nice seating areas so you can have your lunch in the shade. Okay guys, I was looking at the giraffes. Uh, they had a little fight. So I want to warn everybody that watches it, this part. Uh, basically giving you guys viewer discretion. It could be upsetting to see. See these two giraffes getting in a little scuffle with each other. Getting into a scuffle. Oh, jeez. Whoa, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh my god. Okay, now that was not good. Hey. That was not good. He's dead. All right, all right. Look at him. He's breathing. Not too long. Um, what do they do? I mean, why did the guy look at the bench? Spray him with the hose. Oh my God, he's gonna step on his neck. Oh man, that is sad. Hey. He's not going to kick you when he's done. He's going to stomp on his head. That's what oh, they do. Wow. Oh my god, I can't touch this. Yeah. Yeah. With, um... Yeah, she does. Oh, wow. Are we going to witness this right now? Yeah, I'd say he's hurt. Okay, they are asking everyone to leave the area so they can tend to the uh, injured giraffe. Uh, I don't know the extent of its injuries. The keepers just got here. They're going to separate the giraffes, of course. Uh, that's part of nature, unfortunately. You take the good with the bad, or the bad with the good, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, very sad to see any animal getting injured, especially uh, that big of an animal. Uh, looks like he lost his footing and fell into uh, the water bin. Okay, just got a little update on the giraffe. Uh, he's back up. So uh, they have all of them separated. They're going to uh, render aid, of course, so everything's going to be good. So it was just scary to see, but. Uh, Again, these are wild animals, so good to hear that he's all right. Very scary to see, though. Now, I mentioned earlier the scenery at this zoo is really, really great. And all the big trees, like this great big one, where they grow into each other. So it's really cool looking. And this sculpture is called Grace the Humpback Whale. This nice little plaque here on the ground. The walking trail here. So the actual zoo layout uh, goes in kind of a loop. So you don't miss everything. You don't have to keep backtracking like uh, some zoos have. So it's a nice zoo loop. Takes you all around to different areas. It's the famous toucan. This is all the way back from the uh, 1950s for the actual beginning of the Caribbean gardens. Now these trees are really neat looking. Oh, the Royal Palm Walkway. The Royal Palms on either side. Makes a natural canopy. This is called Gertrude the Penguin. 
All these plastics that make up this sculpture were washed on shore and collected from the Pacific, the West Coast, California. We got a black crowned crane. Got a couple of them here. Grooming themselves. Like their hairdo. Sitatunga, I believe it's what it's called. Got two of them in the back of the enclosure. All the way in the back. That striped hyena. Got the hyena there. There's a pizza box. Looks like this guy got a hold of a cell phone and called for delivery. Ate the, ate the pizza and now he's taking a nap. <laughs> All right. Must be a guy hyena. Alright, we got a Florida panther. Uh, panther is here underneath that little bench or perch, what do you want to call it? Taking a nap. Part of the panther's enclosure, he's got a nice uh, little water play area. Okay, that's cool. Florida Panther. She's a little bit wet because she was just playing in the water. <laughs> Her name is Athena. The sun says many uh, Florida Panthers have black fur. Well, he's going after lizards. See the cutouts that they have of the animals. Two really big snakes in here. We got a reticulated python. So a reticulated python just uh, kind of curled up, trying to stay cool. And then we got a Burmese python. And you can see how big the Burmese python is. Very invasive species, especially in the Everglades. Oh, those are leaves? Oftentimes, okay. pet snakes that were released once they got too big. These pythons coiled up in the corner here. Uh, these animals are voracious eaters. They'll go after uh, native species, other snakes, birds. Small animals. You can see uh, Naples is just north of the Florida Everglades. So they're very close and they are a partner. This other one, his head is tucked in like he's sucking his tail. Well, they go and try and uh, catch these animals, try and find the egg nests. Oh, we got black bears. Got two big giant teddy bears in here. Taking a snooze. Get you a better view of some of the habitat with the bears. Just the back portion of the bear habitat. As you can see, they have lots of space to roam around. Alright, this garbage can with a lock on it basically shows that uh, bears, especially in the rural parts of the state where uh, wild bears are more likely to be than in a big city, bears can easily get into trash cans. Ah, coyote. There's our coyote.
Hi Coyote. Ooh. What's up, baby? Oh, nice. Came up a little closer. Let me get a better view. Thank you. So nice. Hi. Very, very good. Right so the coyote has nice water and climbing area. Came back to the coyotes and they got a second coyote out. Hi! Another coyote. What's up? Coyote one and coyote two. What's up, baby? The coyotes are members of the canine family. And they are found all throughout Florida. Even in the part of the state that I live in. Coyotes are very adaptive at what they eat and where they roam. Zoo also has a nice playground area. Kids have run off some energy. This is a fossa. Formerly Fossa. I think animals could change their names like that. And there he is laying on the ground. Or she. She's, uh... Size-wise, they could resemble, um... Some of them could be like a large house cat. Obviously this is a lot bigger than a house cat, but still, you know, I've seen other ones in other zoos. What do you look more like house cat size? Now to look at the fossa right next to the fence here. So sprawled out, trying to cool off. We saw some lemurs on the boat tour before, but this is a red ruffed lemur. There they are. You guys just like hanging out there, man. Chilling out on the log. You look comfortable. A little better view of the second one. Also in the same enclosure as the lemurs to get a radiated tortoise. Tortoise right there. Got the best shot I'm gonna get of it. We got a yellow back duker. And I can see why it has that name, because it's got a yellow back. Hi. It's cute, huh? Yeah. Alright, the same enclosure with a yellow back duker, we have a Reeves Muntjack. Right in the back. There we go. Got a few of them, it looks like. Oh, wait, I lost them. Sorry. I've got a Malayan tiger. I was looking all over for this guy, and he's right in the back next to the ball. Uh, trying to hide behind the bushes. Yep. Get him a lion tiger out. Now that he saw me with the camera, he's going to disappear, right? Yeah, some animals are camera shy. You can see our American alligators up on the shore now. Or near the shore, rather. Alright, giraffes! Alright, I'm back at the giraffe enclosure. This is all the reticulated giraffes. 
Uh, the one in the center is the one that had the little tumble earlier. He is okay. Veterinarians checked them all out. No injuries. They gave him some aspirin, you know, to... Uh, he's going to have some sore muscles. The other ones there, uh, consoling him. You can see them here. And then right in the front. And people can actually feed the giraffes. Yeah, feed them uh, leaves of romaine lettuce. The giraffe feeding experience. Five dollars to feed the giraffes. Basically got really long tongues and the long necks to be able to reach for the food. You can see the crushed uh, water barrel. That's where the giraffe fell. Alright, we got uh, some cheetah. Now it's the third time I've come back to this enclosure. And there she or he is. Right by the fence. There's also another one further back along the fence. Trying to get a better view, but he's fence kind of obscures some of it. This the other cheetah. Now, if you've seen any of my other zoo videos, I always recommend to return to an enclosure if you don't see the animal the first time. Come back later. Chances are the first time you come around they're either sleeping or hiding or they could be in the back. So always come back and check and uh, chances are you're going to be able to see the animal. You can create a backyard wildlife habitat. Basically create an environment that is enticing for the birds. You can also get butterflies and even uh, bees. Because if we don't have bees, we don't have pollination, and without pollination, we have no vegetation. The sculpture is an American sea star. Uh, so all the debris was collected from beaches in the Pacific and turned into these sculptures. This goes to show you how much everyday trash is out there in the environment. All right, right in the front here of the entrance is a Safari Canyon Open Air Theater. Got different events throughout the day. Soon to be 2.30, so I'm going to see the seated safari. Just give me a little preview of the theater. How are you doing today? Good. Awesome. Well, happy Veterans Day. I just want to say thank you to all of you who are currently serving or who have served for our country. We really appreciate you guys. And thank you for coming here and celebrating it here at the Naples Zoo. Now, my name is Katie, and we all know that animals, they come in all different shapes and sizes and can be found in many different environments all over the world. And the prey and the predators that all of these animals face are very unique and different. So, these guys, they need some really awesome tools to help them to be able to survive and to defend themselves against all of those different animals. So, I figured for this show, we would go ahead and introduce you guys to some of our really awesome animals tell you a little bit about some of their defenses and some ways that they use them. How's that sound? Pretty good? Yeah. All right, so I figured we would go ahead and introduce you guys to Baku. And Baku is an African serval. I want to see one though. And <laughs> we like to bring out the serval first because they have a lot of different tools to help them survive out in the wild. So these guys are... <laughs> 
Baku is a, a little bit nervous out here, so if everyone could just kind of remain seated, maybe a little bit quiet, that way he doesn't get them spooked out here. Um, but servals are really awesome. Like I said, they've got a lot of different tools to help them out and survive out in the wild. These guys are really awesome predators. And when they go hunting, they have a success rate of about 50%. So that means um, one out of two times they are catching those prey items. Now, the way they're able to have such a high success rate is because they've got some a really unique hunting way. So what they do is they have the ability to jump about 10 to 12 feet straight up into the air. So what they do is they jump up really, really high, and they jump down and use their um, the force and the body weight of their body to land down on those prey items. So that's why their success rate is so high. Now, even though servals, they are top predators, um, they are, I'm sorry, even though they are good predators, they are not top on the food chain. So they do face a lot of wild threats out in the wild, such as um, dogs, hyenas, and even leopards. But luckily for them, they do have that jumping ability. So if they were being chased by a predator, what they would do is they would jump up in multiple different directions to try to confuse those predators, which it does work a good majority of the time. So it's great to help them out. And then another cool defense that they have is their fur coat. So you can see Baku has that really pretty coloration. And what that does is it actually allows them to be able to blend into the savanna grasses where they're found. And that way they can sneak up on their prey items as well as to hide from all of those larger predators. So they've got a lot of different tools to help them out. And here at the Naples Zoo, uh, what we love to do is we give all of our animals different enrichment items. That's not part of the show. <laughs> um, but we love to give all of our animals different enrichment. And what we do is we try to give them that enrichment to bring out a lot of natural behaviors. So it could be in the, a toy, it could be a way that we hide their food, a way that we give them food or different treats. Um, and one time what we did for Baku is we wanted to bring out that hunting behavior. And we actually gave him an entire roll of toilet paper. I don't know if any of you have ever had your cat or dog get into a roll of toilet paper. Um, it's quite a mess. And Baku spent the majority of the day pouncing on that roll of toilet paper and throwing it up in the air until it was completely unraveled. So it was very fun for him, but not too fun to clean up, but that's all right. Now, I figured I would bring out another animal with a really awesome survival tool that's very, very strong. So with that in mind, I figured we would introduce you guys to Wags. And Wags is going to be coming out of this little hole over here. And I see him, he's coming out. <laughs> and Wax is our African gray parrot. Now, what do you guys think his really strong defense is? His beak. Yeah, someone said his beak, yeah. So it's a very, very strong tool for him to have. Hold on, let's see if he'll come on. Uh, he's getting a little bit nervous. The animals seem to be a little bit nervous today. I'm not really sure why. Um, but that beak is very, very strong. It's very important for um, macaws and parrots out in the wild because they use it in a lot of different ways. So not only do they use it to be able to get into their food items, they eat a lot of different nuts and fruits, but they can also use it to maneuver around. So they kind of use it like a third foot sometimes. And Wax, now that he's coming over, he will showcase that off. And what he's going to do is he's actually going to climb up that rope head first using his beak. And then when he comes down, he actually turns head first and really uses it. So out in the wild, instead of just being able to fly from tree to tree, they can climb on different vines, which is great for them. And then it's also, like I said, it's a very strong tool. And they actually have about 1,500 pounds per square inch of pressure in that beak. So that's a lot of pressure. You definitely wouldn't want to get your fingers anywhere near that. Um, which is great for them out in the wild to help with all of those food items. And it's also great for a defense for them. Because typically, you know, we think of birds being able to just fly away as a defense. But say out in the wild, maybe they had a, a broken wing or maybe they couldn't fly for whatever reason. They need to rely on these other defenses to help them out. Such as that bite force. You can imagine if they were to get a hold of a predator, that could do some pretty serious damage. And then another awesome defense that they have are their feet. So parrots, they don't really have really sharp talons. However, their toenails can grow and get a little bit sharp. So what they do is they'll kick out their feet and scratch those predators. And then another thing that they have, and Wax, he isn't the best example of it, but did you guys all see our um, big girls out there, the blue and gold and uh, the military? Yeah. 
So they're both very, very brightly colored. And I bet if I said that they use that as camouflage to hide, you guys would kind of look at me strange. Um, because if they were here on stage, you know, they wouldn't be hidden too much. But where they're from in the rainforest, there's a lot of different colors, a lot of different flowers and plants. So having a bright coloration helps them camouflage and hide more. So it's kind of interesting, but it's a really great defense for them to have. And a lot of animals really rely on that coloration and that camouflage to help them survive. So with that, I figured I would introduce you guys to Otis. And Otis is our six-banded armadillo. And armadillos, they really rely on that coloration as well to help them blend in to hide from predators. Now, what do you guys think the defense for an armadillo is? What do you think they do when they get scared? Yeah, they roll up into a really tight ball. And that is only the case for the three banded armadillos. So there's a three, a six, and a nine. So the six and the nine banded armadillos, they actually can't roll into a ball. So, you know, unlike what we see in movies and stuff, um, what these guys do is instead of rolling into a really tight ball, <laughs> sorry about me, I'm totally anyway, um, they actually completely flatten. So they're kind of like a pancake. So what they do is they pull in on their legs and they just kind of lay there flat. So, like I said, he relies on camouflage. What would he look like if he was just completely flat on the ground? A what? He, he would look like a tire, yeah. But um, he looks like a, a rock is kind of what I was getting at. Um, because imagine him on dirt with uh, different types of, um, I'm sorry, leaves and wood. He would really blend in. So it's great to have that coloration. And then obviously they've got that really strong outer covering. So we like to call it their armor. Because that outer covering is made with a really strong bony material and really tough skin on top of it. So a lot of animals, it's hard for them to get through that, which is great for the armadillo for defense. Now, these guys, you might have noticed as Otis is walking around, he's got those really long claws. And those claws are very, very strong. So armadillos, they have a lot of strength. Otis is actually able to move a lot of really heavy logs in his enclosure, which you wouldn't really expect him to be able to, but these guys are very, very strong. So what they do when they are scared a lot of times, besides flattening out, is they burrow. So they can de um, dig really deep burrows and they can run into them and hide. And what they would do is they would hook their really long claws to the back of the burrow. So if an animal were to try to be pulling them out, they've got the strength to hold themselves in so they don't become a meal. So it's also another great form of defense for them. Now, a lot of animals, they use coloration in different ways. So as we saw with birds and with Otis, they use their coloration to hide. But sometimes animals use coloration to stand out. And that is the case for Lily here. And Lily is our striped skunk. And now when we all see that black and white coloration, what do we want to do? Run, right? <laughs> Turn the other way. Um, which is what that coloration is there for. So skunks, they have that because that's their first line of defense. They want a predator to see them immediately and turn around and run away. Um, and then if that doesn't work, the skunk actually stomps their feet and lifts their tail up above their head, trying to make them sound and look as large as possible. Um, because they don't want to use that spray right away, so they don't have a constant supply. So if they do use that spray, um, they have to wait a little bit to let it replenish. So it puts them um, out of their defense. And you know, we all know what skunk spray smells like, right? How many of us have smelled it? How many of us want to smell it right now? No one, no? <laughs> well, luckily for you, you don't have to worry about that today. But skunks, when they do spray, they can spray it about 20 feet away. So it's definitely a powerful tool for them. But Lily, actually, she doesn't spray because Lily used to be someone's pet. And when they are pets, what they do is when they're little, they take that scent gland out completely. Um, which is not a good thing because they can never be released out into the wild because they, you know, their main form of defense has been taken away. But for skunks, even though they do have that awesome defense, you know, unfortunately, they do face a really serious problem and it's from us a lot of the time. Because we can find them, oh, I'm just going to have you sit down, buddy. We don't want to spook the animal. There we go. Um, they do face a really serious problem, and it's from us a lot of the times, and that is being hit by cars. 
So how many of us have ever seen a skunk or maybe any animal on the side of the roadway? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we all have at one point. Um, and I actually have a quiz for you guys. I want to see how many animals you think are killed on U.S. roadways every night. What do you guys think? I got A, B, and C. A. I heard it, yeah, a lot. So it's A. Wow. About one million animals are killed on U.S. roadways every night. Who's shocked for that number? I'm hoping everyone's shocked by that number. Yeah, that's an insane number. Um, and it's definitely possible because if you think about maybe on your one way to work in the morning, you might see one or two animals on the side of the road. And that's just on one very short roadway. If you multiply that by every single road here in the U.S., that number adds up very fast. Luckily, we can lower it by simply doing a few things, and that's not throwing our food and trash out the car window. I'm sure some of us have, you know, maybe had that apple core and we just toss it out the window because, you know, we think it's biodegradable, which it is. But what that does is it invites all of these animals right up to the road to find that food, which, you know, is when they do get hit by cars. And, you know, a lot of times we can slow down when we're driving, especially at nighttime and in wildlife zones, because we've got a lot of slower friends out there that are just trying to make their way across. And that is the case for Stuart here. Mm -hmm. And Stuart is our leopard tortoise. Now, how many of you guys have ever seen a turtle or a tortoise trying to make their way across the road? Yeah, a lot of us, especially here in Florida, we got them all over the place. And you all know how slow they can be. Um, so if we do slow down when we're driving, that gives them a chance to be able to make it across. And that way we see them and we don't accidentally run over them. Because even though they've got that really strong shell as a defense, it doesn't stand uh, pretty much a chance with being hit by cars. Is that a good picture? Um, but out in the wild, that shell is great for them for all of their natural predators. Because a lot of animals wouldn't even try to make a leopard tortoise a meal because as soon as they pull in all their legs and head, a lot of animals don't have the tool to be able to break through that really strong shell, which is great for them. And then the leopard tortoise, they've got another defense that works pretty well. And what they can do is if they get picked up by a predator, if they feel very nervous, they can release all of their bowel movements and any stored water that they have, and they can just shoot it on their predators. It's kind of gross. Does anyone want to see it right now? Yeah, that'd be fun all over my key now. Um, so it's a great defense for them because you can imagine a lot of predators really wouldn't want to eat him after that happens. So it's awesome for them to have. Now, the leopard tortoises, or actually all turtles and tortoises, a lot of times people don't know, but that shell is actually um, fully connected to them. So they can feel everything on that shell. It's attached to all of those muscles and tendons and nerves. So if you were to go up to a tortoise or a turtle and kind of scratch on his back, he would feel that. So, Stuart here, since he doesn't have to worry about all of those predators, he really enjoys getting back scratches because he, he knows it's normally one of us and we have treats sometimes. And so what he'll do is him and Mikey have a really good bond and Mikey will go in there and Stuart will kind of run up to him, you know, as, as fast as he can go. And uh, he enjoys these lovely back scratches. And I don't know if he'll do it out here, but normally what he does is he'll stand up all the way and kind of wiggle in with the scratch. It's very cute to watch. <laughs> so since they do feel it and it's completely attached, they're obviously bored with that shell. So they want to make sure that they keep it safe and strong for their entire lives. So the leopard tortoises are very, very smart animals. And what they've learned is they've learned over time to eat a food item out in the wild to help keep their shell really strong. It's a little bit gross, and I want you guys to see if you can guess what a leopard tortoise might look for. I want to hear some gross answers. It's your time to shout them out. Worms. Worms, that's a good guess. What else? Snakes. Bugs, I heard someone say. Yeah, what else? Snakes. I think I heard someone say it. Dung. <laughs> so they do eat poop. Did anyone guess that? Yeah, I said dung. Some of you? Yeah. So they specifically look for hyena poop. And the reason they do is because hyenas, they eat meat. And they eat the majority of the bones of their prey items. So the hyena's poop is filled with a lot of calcium. And that calcium is how they keep their shell nice and strong. It's very, very strange to think about. But, you know, they don't have vitamin stores like we do. They can't just go and get those natural supplements. They have to find them. And they realize that that hyena poop is the best way to do it. 
Now, like I said, a lot of animals don't have tools to be able to break through a really strong shell like that. But, of course, there are exceptions, and there is an animal that does have one. And with that, I figured I would introduce you guys to Potassi. And Potassi is our southern ground hornbill. Now, what do you guys think her tool is that she has to break through a tortoise's shell? Peck at it. Yeah, that beak is an awesome tool for them to have. So they use it in a lot of different ways. So it's one of their main survival tools. They can use it to obviously find all their food items. Um, they can also use it to bring back pretty large items with them. So stay out in the wild, a female was trying to build a nest, she can bring some pretty heavy and large items back with her. And then also it's their main defense. Because just like their name states, the southern ground hornbill, they do spend the majority of their time down on the ground, even though they do have those full wings. Sometimes they will go up in the trees at night to sleep, but mostly they are running around down on the ground during the daytime. So they do face a lot of natural predators out there. That's why they need a really awesome defense to help them out. And I'm sure, she, as she's showing off, she's showing us how she can crush all those almonds here. Um, and I'm sure you guys can imagine, if they are able to break through a tortoise's shell with just a few pecks, how much damage they could do to all of those potential predators. So it's a really, really strong beak. I like to call it her sword, um, because you definitely don't want to get near it, that's for sure. Um, but all of these animals, they have really awesome defenses, and I'm sure you guys saw they're all different, because they, all, they do face different prey items as well as those predators. So they need those tools to help them survive. And sometimes we might make it hard for them to survive, but luckily for us, we can be great defenders for these animals. And it's just by doing a few things. So we always like to end the show with a fun acronym, and that is SMILE. So SMILE is a really easy way for all of us to remember how to help these guys out. So each letter stands for something different. The S, you know, is shopping smart. We could also be making a greater connection with some of these guys. We can also realize that one person can make a difference. And then also, really changing some of our lifestyle choices are pretty easy to make. One of them is not throwing our food and trash out the car window. How many people think that we can stop doing that? Yeah, hopefully. Just wait until you get to the proper place to throw it away. It's very easy, and it helps keep our roadways nice and clean. And then the E stands for educating others. If you guys learned something that you thought was interesting, go ahead and share it, because word of mouth is a really powerful tool. But just for you guys coming here to the Naples Zoo, you are already making a big difference. So I want to thank you guys so much for coming today. I hope you all have a great day. And again, happy Veterans Day. Bye, guys. All right, right in the front, the exit is the gift shop. You can get lots of different souvenirs, from lots of shirts, an assortment of hats, all different sizes and sayings on them. Lots of stuffed animals. It's a cool looking giraffe. Refillable, reusable bottles, whole assortment of plush animals. Lots of children's books, educational activities, pop up books. We also have some animal puzzles, smaller size plush. She was also very popular with children's groups. So you have uh, inexpensive gifts they can get. And of course, you got different candies. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. That was my trip to the Naples Zoo in Naples, Florida. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a comment and a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video lets me know that you appreciate what I'm trying to show you all the places I go to I try to give as much detailed look around especially with the zoos all different animals 
I always go back multiple times to different enclosures if I don't see the animal the first time so that way you get to see all the animals that they have available in the zoo. I have more zoos I'll be visiting in the future. So if you have any, like I said, any comments, leave them for me. I try to always get back to people the same day, if not a uh, couple days after that. But I always return people's comments. You guys take the time to leave a comment. I am going to try my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you've not already subscribed, please do so and hit that notification icon so that way you'll know when I upload different videos, which I do all the time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.